Check this out. <laughs> the usual, like, quantum nonsense. Friend of the show. Uh, I'm not familiar with the Drake stuff. Single stuff for you. He's just plain un American. Uh, America. I wonder if they have double stuffs. Nope. Like Brimley, bro. Yo. Fuck this. Uh, so now you're cosplaying it in real life. And that is America. It's the most un American thing I've ever heard. Broadcasting live from inside the power band, this is The Blah. I'm your host, The Mulverine, along with my super friends, Zar Higo. Hi. And C Lab Forever. Yo, how's it going? <laughs> it's going great. Good. Uh, welcome to the podcast, folks. 2020 is now over, and that can only mean one thing. That it's 2021, and it's time for our annual top five list. So strap in your belts, and here we go. Here it is. Number one, I love puppies. <laughs> <laughs> puppies are my favorite. I joined the subreddit r forward slash I love puppies. It's my favorite new thing. That's it. Good pick. So uh, this was somewhat difficult to come up with. How did you both fare? Chad, I'm a... Yeah, I'm a little bit more media heavy this year than last year. Oh, really? But uh, I, I did okay. Okay, that's good. I'm sure you were uber prepared, Chad. Oh, I just started a list much earlier in the year, and whenever something uh, blew me away, Tickled I, I you. marked it down. So I ended up with four things and then just had to come up with one. So I suppose, yes, I was a bit. He started it when we got off the air, finishing up the last one last year. Last time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I started a new algorithm to create my top five. There you go. I like it. It's a year ahead with Christmas presents. Mm, Yeah. Yeah. And then by the time Christmas comes, all the gifts are totally irrelevant and unwanted. Yeah. I've already got your Christmas presents for next year ready. They're on their way. Oh, my God. Wow. They might make you. You are on top of it. (laughs) Maybe I'll get you my this year's one by next Christmas. Then that'll that'll even out. Maybe. maybe. Do you, uh, Benny, how did you fare with this? Oh, well, I started a list uh, last year right after the uh, Top 5 podcast, and uh, my dog ate it, so. <laughs> it's gone. I was left with just trying to figure it out uh, over the past week or so. <laughs> Love it. And how how's your shape up, Mulvey? Uh, I, I, had a, I had a little struggle with this. Um, this was such a weird year, so it, it, it boiled down to... Uh, I started thinking about it a week ago, and then it really boiled down to just kind of focusing on what really made me feel good, regardless of what the sort of category was. Yeah. That's it. It was a shit show of a year. I don't know what's on your guys' lists, but like, you know, it just it was just such a crazy, strange year. Even just in the space that we've been talking about, like movies and stuff, like there haven't been any movies really. And, no, like every industry everywhere is just imploded, mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. I don't know. I kind of suppose, by definition, the top five are kind of like five random things that brought some happiness in a in a crazy ass year. I think it was all about things that were comforting and somewhat distracting for me. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, well said. Well said. Let's get stuck into it. Rock paper scissors. Can we do? Can we do a podcast? Rock paper scissors. What would that? I don't think that would work. Uh, I would just lie. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. Yeah, exactly. You would lie. I think you need the visual component. You know what we would need? We would need like a an app that does that for us, and I bet there is. I bet there is one. Let's get on it. We'll make millions. The, the EBD Rock, Paper, Scissors app. Now you can play with your mm-hmm. friends when you're not at home. <laughs> Here you go. First merch item of 2021. Boom, an app. Mulvey, why don't you go, Mulvey? Fire it up. I don't know where to start on my list of like in terms of prioritizing everything. I think I'll leave. Um, hmm. I have more than five. Oh yeah. Yeah. I just got to kind of distill it down. I'm going to start with, um, uh, I'm going to preface this by saying that the show was one of the things that brought me a lot of joy. You know, like we've worked really hard sure. and, you know, we've got some great people that listen to the show that love the show, and that makes me happy. So when we're talking about what got us jazzed in the year, that's one of the things. That being said, one of those sub-items in that was reconnecting with my love 
of Wilford Brimley and uh, his Quaker <laughs> Oak commercials. I was very sad that we lost him this year. Yeah, especially after you fat shamed him. Yeah. <laughs> Did I do that? No, I'm just blaming you for the uh, the piss take we all made and then apologize for. Uh, so yeah, I I I'll start off with that. That was that was something that I really enjoyed over and over again this year. Uh, was the uh, the Brimley thread that wove its way throughout low many of the shows we did. Hmm. It was definitely one of the stronger threads. It was just fun and funny, and people liked it. It does. I remember particularly mm-hmm. a recent episode where you started. It continues. An impression of somebody, and it turned into a Brimley. Yeah, that was in Dimian. I was like, okay, because like when, when you started the impression and it started turning, I remember sitting here on the mic being like, oh, man, I'm going to totally bring up Brimley. And then you morphed it into a Brimley, and I just like <laughs> slapped my leg and cracked up because I was like, I was fucking hoping you were going to go there. It was so <laughs> funny, dude. Oh. Brimley brought a lot of joy this year. RIP, Mr. Brimley. Exactly, man. He brought me a lot of joy. So there's my number five pick. It's a good choice. Wilford Brimley. The Brimster. The Brimster. Who's next? I don't mind. You want to go, Benny? Go ahead, man. Okay. Um, I tried my best to stick to the last year's kind of method of it needs to be something from the year. Mm. There's a couple of like minor cheating elements in a couple of my picks, but. Ooh. Con- controversy already. I love it. Ah, you know how you know how it is. I bend my own rules because fuck it. I don't practice what I preach. Yeah, don't worry about us. Double stuffed Oreos are on my list this year to to kind wow. of go along with my cranberry sauce pick from last year because mm. I shit you not, double stuffed Oreos debuted in Australia for the first time in the last sixty days. Are you serious? I've been, I've been like hunting for double stuffed Oreos for like eight fucking years, and I, I mean like I'm not even that obsessed with them, but. You know, I like a good double stuff every once in a while. and They literally have not existed in Australia until the last couple of months, so. Like, you mean ever? Ever. Like, they just never have ever had them. They have Oreos. They don't even have, like, the, like, three-in-a-row packs that you open up and can close again. What? They don't even have three-in-a-row packs. The only Oreos you could buy in Australia until a couple months ago was, like, a single tube of single-stuffed Thin, shitty Oreos. That is so anemic and so <laughs> unsatisfying. Mm. All right. Well, single pack, single stuff Oreos is just plain un-American. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm with you, man. I'm with you. It's like a caricature of America. It's not American. I agree. They got to be doubles. That's the most un-American thing I've ever heard. I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> it's... No, it is. Like, because in this 2020 day and age, double stuff Oreos pretty much represent everything that this somewhat bloated mm. gas bag of a country has, is currently uh, inhabiting. When you, I think Australians would probably be horrified when they came here and went to the Oreos section to see all of the disgusting other Oreo Franken creations that they've made. Because they're, I mean, for a purist like myself, yeah. it's. Oreos and double stuff. That's it. There is nothing else. So you can cram whatever uh, kind of nefarious goo you can come up with in the in the middle of those two crackers, but it, it's not or an ridge or a double stuff. It ain't really an Oreo. And I'm really surprised to hear that, man. That they just finally came out in Australia. Is it was it kind of one of those things where you're like, I'm not really obsessed with them, but. The fact that they don't exist here is now making me want to hunt them down, <laughs> which is not. A- I was definitely looking for them like for years, just like, man, it sucks. They don't have them here. You know, like early, early days. Anyone who's ever spent any time out of the United States, like living or traveling, like there's pretty much zero products that you can get that are American, generally speaking. Mm. So you just kind of miss the simple shit, you know, and. Oreos were one of those things for me. And I, I remember like looking at the cookie sections eight years ago and being like, Jesus, they don't really have any fucking American cookies here. Wow. Like, oh, there's a weird tube of shitty Oreos. Huh. Wonder if they have double stuffs. Nope. Well, fuck this. And then eight years later, I walked in and saw them and like, you know, got down on my knees and wept and it was great. 
Wow, you have had a lot of weeping lately, man. You cried. It's been a weepy year. I've been. It's been a very weepy year. It has. I mean, you cried now with the Oreos. You cried a, a week ago with uh, when when Luke Skywalker showed up in Mando. You know, I mean, God, it's uh, you're very in touch with yourself. I like that. I've been doing the Kevin Smith. You know, Kevin Smith cries a lot. I'm I'm in touch with my inner Kevin Smith. Hey, man, nothing wrong with that. I've got two two things to say on Oreos before we move on. One is I w- was trying to find out the exact date that they premiered in Australia and in the process ended up on the Oreo website where you can buy like Oreo Maxes and Oreo like fucking big times. What are those? And if you imagine like taking the cream out of six double stuffs and putting it in one that's like they actually sell them. It's just kind of – I'm kind of intrigued but kind of horrified. So is it kind of like – are you talking about like the difference between the Drake's Coffee Cake Junior and the Big Boy, like that kind of thing? I'm not familiar with the Drake's Coffee Cake. Being an Nantucketer, oh come on, I, I don't know if I had access to Drake's Coffee Cakes enough to know what they are. Well, is that what you mean by the Max? Like, is it like a giant Oreo? No, oh no, no, no. I mean, like, it's a traditional Oreo circumference or diameter. But the thickness is now like quadruple or six times. So it's like a normal cookie size, but like stupid amounts of cream inside. That's weird. Yeah. I don't know about that. (laughs) I think Oreo should just give up the pretense and, you know, go ahead, Oreo. You're welcome. Just sell people the little wafer cookies and a giant fucking tub of the stuff. Dude, don't even tub it. I want like a caulking gun full of the fucking cream. I would happily stick a tube of Oreo cookie filling in a caulking gun and sit there and just like fill my own cookies i think that'd be fucking amazing maybe it should just be like a co2 charged like gun that you just oh like fucking cheese whiz or whatever that stuff is you just point into your mouth and shoot and it just pumps like you know like a cup of stuff into your mouth i like the i like the cheese fuck me i would do that I like the cheese whiz idea, Chad, but I got to say, I like Benny's CO2 gun idea better. <laughs> oh, like a whip it kind of thing? Uh, I'm feeling like a more advanced piece of hardware, but yeah, something like that. <laughs> kind of like a hyper like a hyper spray from Star Trek, but for oh, Oreo okay. stuff mm. that you put in your mouth. Yeah. I like it. Interesting. But a hypo spray is like, isn't that when they just direct it, direct inject it right into your vein? <laughs> right, but then just... Direct injection into your mouth. Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> and that is American. I would, I would like to just add uh, about your Oreo pick in general. I understand that comfort level of that. And I, I would like to say that my Brimley pick, like in as much as he brings me joy, he himself is like that satisfying stick to your ribs bowl of oatmeal. Okay. You know what I mean? He is the creamy filling. No, no, I'm not going to go that far, but he is the bowl of oatmeal. He is that hearty bowl of oatmeal. He's hearty like that bowl of oatmeal. Gotcha, gotcha. He's very comforting. Strangely enough, all the uh, oatmeal brimley talk got me eating oatmeal again this year. Really? Damn it, I wish I, yeah. I hadn't in quite some time. That's awesome. I would love to eat it again, Uh, and I just started getting my kids Kodiak cakes, and Kodiak cakes... Oatmeal? They make an oatmeal? And I'm dying to try it, but I don't eat gluten, so I can't. Thank you for listening to my Oreo diatribe, dudes, but uh, enough about Oreos. What's your, Betty, what's your first uh, item on your list? Well, I'm inspired now, and this is something I was considering, but for the sake of variety and eliminating having uh, two video games on my list, I, I think I'm going to go with this. Uh, I was inspired by Chad. Um, after watching Die Hard, mm, I, like it. I was somewhat uh, inspired, apparently, subliminally because i was standing in line at the grocery store and lo and behold next to me there was well two packs of twinkies nice oh nice i knew you were gonna say that and uh in an impulse buy i bought the twinkies and uh just for some background here i had not had twinkies i would i would guess it had to be at least 30 years since i'd had a twinkie (laughs) that is a long time yeah and they were surprisingly delightful were they good that's awesome I really enjoyed them. <laughs> I love it. I love that that came out of that likely came out of the Die Hard experience too. That's great. I do too, man. I like that. I really like that a lot. That's a good pick. Um, yeah, first Twinkie in in thirty years. It's a it's a 
you know, that's a milestone. That is a milestone. I haven't even had like the deep fried Twinkies, you know, that everybody's like crazy about. I just, uh, I don't know. I like it, dude. Yeah, I like it a lot, man. I think just sitting here reminiscing uh, about Twinkies myself, I haven't eaten one in probably 30 years either. And I actually, the order of magnitude of my favorites of these three things, Twinkies were third. Second were the Chocodiles, which were the chocolate-covered Twinkies. Those things were the mm. bomb. And then actually even more so than those were those freaking black cupcakes, man. Those Yeah, dude, I'm a total cupcake girl. Those t- same here, <laughs> cupcake girl. Totally, I can't. I love those damn cupcakes, man. Oh man, and even the even the lemon ones are the the lighter colored ones, man. I'm down with the cupcake. Yeah, those cupcakes were really really good in the chocolate aisles. But I mean, look, no nothing, no guff against the Twinkies. They just happen to be in third place, but they're still like good. Mm. I mean, the when when the cake is like moist and spongy, like they're pretty fresh. You know, ditto the cream, like. They're really good. That's a good pick. I like it. I love the Die Hard tie-in, too. Love the Die Hard tie-in. So thank you, Sergeant L. Powell, for your inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> that poor bastard getting teased about it for the rest of his life. Like, he took one for the team. RVJ, man. Reginald Bill Johnson, baby. All right, Kev, round two. Uh, okay, I'm going to drop this one next because this is something I discovered this year. I actually thought that this was a kid's show, and I – which seems so stupid for somebody like myself who watches so many adult cartoons, but uh, Rick and Morty, I, I didn't, I just never touched it, thought it was a kid's show, and lo, was I ever wrong. It is so like the not a kid's, a kid's show. show. <laughs> it is the opposite of a kid's show. It's a, it's a questionable adult show, and I think it's brilliant. I think it's hysterical. I love everything about it. It's, you know... Very much like Archer, which is one of my favorites. It has, you know, the creators are guys like our age. So, so many of the references are just right in our power band, which I love. You know, the voices are great. It's both Archer and this show have Chris Parnell, who I just love, man. He is so funny and his voice is great. He's a such a good voice actor as much as he is a comedic actor. Yeah, Jerry is a great character. Oh my God, Jerry's awesome, and uh, just just like Cyril Figgis on Archer is a great character, and uh, so Chris Parnell just really dials it in. The whole show is just great, and I love it, and I love that I found it, and I watched all three seasons, and I held off watching the last episode because I was like, oh man, after that there's no more, you know. <laughs> and then luckily they they put uh, season four on Hulu recently, so I was pretty stoked about that. So. Just Rick and Morty in general. I, I just like, I feel like I've discovered a whole new world of awesome animation awesomeness. And I'm very happy about that. That brought me a lot of joy. That's it. I love it. Rick and Morty's great. Yeah, it's one of my faves, man. It's it's really funny and absurd, and but they they use a lot of like really interesting deep concepts sometimes. And it's actually like surprisingly emotional as mm. well. It is. But uh, bringing up... Bringing up uh, Parnell, one of my favorite episodes still is Morty Night Run. And that's the one where they uh, <laughs> what, uh, <laughs> like the the many Ricks of all the you know multiple universes and dimensions just like built this like play pen oh, yeah. business for for Jerry for like you know if he accidentally ends up out on an adventure with them they can just leave him there and yeah, there's, like <laughs> Jerry's from all the different dimensions. Yes. It's just That's so good. That was that was one of the the ones that stuck in my head the most out of the first three seasons, for sure. Very funny. That one and the superhero team one with Million Ants, that one just slayed me. It was so funny, especially Million Ants, the character. Uh and then season four, obviously the heist episode is just I mean, you tip, tipped us off on that heist episode, but it's so good. I just rewatched it the other day. You son of a bitch. I'm in. I love a lot of them, but um, the couple that stick out, one of them is super obvious. Everyone seems to love it, and everyone has a fucking t-shirt. But the Pickle Rick one, I really, really like that one. And um, mm. the one where where uh, Morty becomes president, that was fucking hilarious. Like, that's such a good one. It's, it's a great, like, mind bender in terms of sci-fi as well. Just, like, with the quantum worlds and the realities and all the different things. And, like, you really got to, like think fast to keep up with it you know it's cool like that 
it feels a lot like I mean, this is probably elevating our own stuff a bit too much, but it, it feels a lot like our stupid EBD tie-ins, like where, you know, you create something based on the, all of the lore and references to stuff that you love. You know, like obviously these guys have created some great stuff with all of the characters and the animation style and writing, but like the the, the layers of references they'll throw in really reminds me a lot of, of nerds like us, and I really like that. No, I agree, and I don't think it's in any way like a... Uh... A, a whore's d over or a ripoff like we no all of that stuff that we've done it's it's happened organically you know what i mean but it is definitely there's some similarities there for sure mm. funny that you said whore's d overs i could i could envision that expression being used in the rick and morty universe oh no, I no, could. no. it's too bad that we By Jerry. invented it yeah we invented it though that's our invention just like sequilogy dude sequilogy was the best it was a good one Anything else on uh, old Rick and Morty? No, that's it. It's pretty short and sweet, you know? Like, I just like Rick and Morty. It's funny. It brought me joy. Like, I'm, I'm focused on joy this year for the list. Totally. I'm going to throw out one that I don't know if we're ever going to get to it. I hope I hope we do, but I, it wouldn't surprise me if we don't. But that's uh, The Man in the High Castle, season four in this case. Ooh, nice pick, dude. It's a great show, and it's been going so on for quite it. a while. It took me a while to get to season four, but I watched it this year, and they really did a decent job of wrapping things up, and I really like the show. It's just an awesome example of uh, elevating source material. Yes. In another episode, I think we mentioned the book is like 100 pages. Like it's a short, It's basically a short story, and it is nothing, really nothing like the show. So they just did an awesome job. Yeah, that's so like uh, so many of Philip K. Philip K. Dick's stories and books are like that. They're so short, and like these people that have like sort of glommed onto him and made these various properties out of his work. Like they they've expounded on what he's written, you know, significantly. Like in the case of yeah. Man in the High Castle and Blade Runner now too, because originally I think we talked about this in the Blade Runner episode was, you know, originally Ridney Rid, Ridney. Whitney Scott, <laughs> Wiggly Scott. <laughs> Whitney Scott Houston. Yeah, Wh- Whitney Scott Houston envisioned prequels and sequels and all this sort of thing. That was his original intent. You know, same, same, as you like to say, Chad. Same, same. But that's a great pick. I, I found that show, I knew it was a dick story, and uh, I've watched one through three, and I haven't watched four. But uh, I've loved every minute of it. It's so good that cast is so great and in particular super psyched to see alexa davalos in that she Mm. of course played kira from uh show favorite chronicles of riddick and i've always thought she was fantastic and uh it was really great to see her get something like seriously meaty man you know so great show yeah being a bit of a world war ii nut having a world war ii set sci-fi Nazis win, terrifying to see the Nazi party being like a dominant world power. Like it's just a really fascinating universe. So I highly recommend it. I'm a World War II fan, but I'm I'm a probably an even bigger what if scenario fan. And uh, sure. this definitely scratched the what if fan in me. What do you? What do you? Any thoughts, Benny? What do you think? Yeah, I don't know. I think we might have enough dick. <laughs> Fair enough. Scratch that from the record. I don't know if. Like, that was funny, but it might also be a death. No, I like that. I don't even have my death tally out. Oh, boy. That's a death. Well, I wasn't. Whoa. Wow. Yeah, I didn't I didn't think we were actually going to use that, but I had to say it. I like it. No, I think that was good. That was great. I watched the th- first three seasons and have yet to watch the fourth season of Man in the High Castle. And uh, oh, I was really enjoying it. It's just there's so much stuff to watch now mm. that it's... Uh, I only have so much bandwidth, man. I know, right? But I hope to I hope to shoehorn that one in soon. Yeah. I felt very similar and then I just kind of I don't know, I, I kind of recall being like, Okay, cool, like I see where this is going and I don't know how much more of this I want to see after season three, but they they did a surprisingly good job of wrapping things up, so I was pretty pumped. It was nice. It's nice to see a, a group of creators not drop a ball. So Yes. They did not drop the ball. Yeah, it's, that's always good. I can't remember who who's the lead actor in that. The guy, the Nazi guy, the American Nazi. Oh, dude, he's so good. Rupert uh, 
Yes, yeah, Smith. Yeah, Rupert something. He's an English actor. He's great. He was in Dark City. That's a great, great science fiction movie. Okay, good. I like it. Rufus Sewell. That's it. Rufus Sewell, not Rupert. Rufus Sewell. That's right. Thank you, Jimmy Google. Yep, and you get an ejection death for that. Ah, okay. But I saved your ass. Uh, I wasn't looking for it. I was. I was. I let it go. I had let it go, man. <clears throat> go fuck yourself. Okay. Next uh, pick. Well, is that uh, enough about dick? That's plenty of dick. Oh my god! Wow. I don't know if a nuclear bomb is going to come down and destroy you both, but it might. It's all right. I've had my fill of dick. I can die happy. Oh wow! Yeah, I think I've, <laughs> I think I've had enough dick myself. Yeah. Oh man. Oh my god. What? Come on, man. Who doesn't love a good Philip K. Dick? Uh, Jesus Christ. Who doesn't love a good <laughs> Philip K. Dick? Joke? That is a, that's the only death right there. That, that's the death. <laughs> I know everybody loves a good uh, K. Dick joke. I'm not talking about dick jokes. I'm talking about Philip K. Dick jokes. Important distinction there. All right, Mr. Dick. What's your, what's your pick there, Mr. Dick? Go ahead. Dick's Picks, uh, Volume 6. <laughs> what was that? Uh, it was a fucking Grateful Dead reference. Dick's Picks, Volume 6. Yes, also a death. I'm throwing out the very random reference there. Every time I hear a Grateful Dead reference, I'm, I'm dead. <laughs> pretty pretty much, yeah. Fair enough. Every time you hear one, you die? Yeah, I'm dead, and I'm not grateful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was terrible. <laughs> no, I like no, it. No, that was actually great. I, I loved it, man. All right, I'm going to do that. Hang on a second. I'm gonna do... is, it, is it my turn now? It's been your turn. <laughs> but I've been being an idiot. All right. Uh, being that we're in no particular order here as far as my list goes, uh, I'll stick with the TV series thing. I uh, I enjoyed Raised by Wolves. Did you guys get into that at all this year? I haven't seen it. I've heard a bit about it. it looks cool. Yeah, it was... Uh, what's a what's what's a light spoiler, uh, a lightly spoiler-free kind of idea of the show? What What's it about? It's centered around two androids that have been sent off with, like... Uh, gaggle of kids an incubator kit to start a colony mm. on a planet because earth has been basically ravaged and destroyed by a war okay. between an atheist faction and a religious faction and um while they're there trying to you know get things set up and dealing with the you know problems one might face with trying to set up a, a colony with kids on an alien world the the, the uh the androids are from the atheist faction the religious faction shows up in a ship and you know kind of uh all this stuff happens <laughs> <laughs> sounds kind of like lord of the flies maybe but i don't yeah maybe not uh no not really not really sounds good yeah yeah i i i'm i'm curious about it i i watched the trailer the other day a friend of mine um and I were going back and forth about that texting, and he was saying, "Oh, if you watch Raised by Wolves, I, I canceled my HBO subscription because it's really pricey, and uh, I had too many streaming services, and that one had to go. So unfortunately, I don't have access to it. But uh, it definitely it looks interesting." He told me because he's also a fan of the show, and he had watched and listened to the uh, Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Yeah. And he, he texted me the other day and was like, oh, he's like this, I watched Raise. I started watching Raised by Wolves. He goes, one of the first scenes is they walk into a house and there's a pot of stew boiling on the stove. And I was like, oh, that's what happens in the beginning of Blade Runner. He goes, yeah, that's why I mentioned it. And I was like, mm, I don't know. It didn't really get me jazzed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Did you have like a gripe suit cap because there's a jazzed. pot of stew? But, like, I don't understand. What do you mean? Yeah, I don't. What I'm saying is that, like, that's how Blade Runner 2049 opens. And that scene was originally written for the first Blade Runner, and they did not use it in the first Blade Runner. And when he told me that, like, either in the first couple episodes or in the first scene, that's how it opens, I was just kind of like, really? Like, that's yeah, I don't know. <laughs> more than a... That's, are you not feeling me here? That's, like, more than an homage. It's, like, just an annoying ripoff. It's, like, why more would than you a do what? that? You know what I mean? It's it's more than Whoa. a horse de over. That's a death, my 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 good sir. No, I think Chad. I think what happened there was the Skype cut out, and you thought that I might have said something else. <laughs> was that what happened? But I said I said horse de over. Okay, yeah, 
I, you know what I said? I think if that was the only thing you focused on watching the series, you'd be missing out on a lot of interesting stuff because of uh, no, no, a silly grip of Kev. But, you know. I like it, though. All right. Hold on, Ben. Hold on. Before I don't even remember that happening, to be honest. Uh, uh, <laughs> just hold on. Hold on. Before you, you lambast me, which you can and you are <laughs> fully welcome to do, because uh, it always makes for good show content. I always want to say chat. I'm not lambasting. I'm just, I'm just saying. No. Well, go ahead. Sorry. All right, let me let me fin- let me just address this whole thing about this Horse Deovers first. Okay. I didn't say homage if you think I said that. I said fromage. I was referring to cheese and I just happened to use the French <laughs> I'm word. To, you were referencing the Dexter's Lab oh, I'm led to fromage episode from the mid 90s. I got it. Okay. Another great cartoon. Indeedy. All right, secondly, yeah. Secondly, you're clearly dead fucking wrong here, Kev. <laughs> How, about what? No, I just, I'm just uh, trying to push Benny into lambasting you. Oh, you're trying to incite a riot? Yeah, I'm the religious faction coming in to fuck some shit up over here. He's like, he's like throwing, trying to throw snakes on the plane. Is what he's trying to do. Trying to get That's me and Jarhigo to, to start killing each other. <laughs> I just love I love how you kind of developed a gripe of Kev about something you haven't seen. I just I find that really funny. I don't know. Like, have you guys ever been in the position where I, we can keep this in or not? Uh, I'm sort of leaning towards not, but I'm going to say it anyway. Like, where somebody starts really, like, have you ever been in a Turkish prison? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> That's what this seg section of the show is starting to feel like is a Turkish prison with Peter Graves. <laughs> 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 thank you for making such a good joke that now that has to stay in the show benny okay all right i'm with it man i'm with it i think that um i i had this friend in high school right uh and we're still in touch he's a great guy he i remember he came back from college and he wouldn't stop talking about pearl jam when pearl jam was like a new thing and he didn't stop talking about pearl jam to the effect that i started not wanting to listen to pearl jam because it was getting so annoying do you understand what I'm saying? Like, you ever had that happen to you? Yes. It's sort of the same thing. Like, as soon as I heard that, like, you know, the scene was like boiling pot of stew on the stove, like, I, it was so, it's so Blade Runner. I just kind of like, it just, like, sometimes like that'll happen and it'll just turn me off on something and I'll just be like, ugh, come on, you know, like, come up with something original, you know, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's a turbo gripe for sure. No doubt about it. I, I do think it kind of echoes what Benny was saying a minute ago, though, where, like, there's so much to watch now that even a silly little thing like that will turn you off a show where it'll just, you know, spin off of uh, your radar and never come back. So, like, I kind of get it from that perspective, but uh, it's very much a turbo yeah. gripe. Well, that's kind of it, and it's kind of that um I know – I mean, the, the irrational part of it is that I know that Ben's right, like – I trust. No, this, this no I firstly that, like. Bro. I trust that anything he tells me to watch, I know is going to be good, right? Yeah, so yeah. if he's sitting there saying, "Well, if you're going to let that, you know, get your panties in a knit, you're going to miss out on a lot of great content," he's probably right. But I didn't even think about that. There is so much content. It's like when I hear something like that, I'm like, "Next," you know, and then I'll probably watch it five years later and be like, "Dude, this is so amazing!" And let everybody. Have you guys heard of Race by Wolves? I know, right? Which is even lamer and death worthy. Fair enough. But hey, you know, this is what it is. So anyway, whatever. I'm st- 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 my stupid thing is like taking t- totally taking the focus away from what Ben is talking about. So, uh, <laughs> and everybody, that's what raising <laughs> that's what raised by wolves is all about. It's all about <laughs> a pot of stew <laughs> cooking on a stove. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to make like <laughs> some EBD merch that's like a Raised by Wolves logo with a pot of stew on it. You know, I don't even want to talk about it anymore. Let's just <laughs> let's just move on to the next one and leave it there because it's funny. Not, 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 it's not, it's not even that, that I just ruined the entire thing. I totally ruined the show for Ben. <laughs> <laughs> you, you threw like seven grenades in the room, bro. That's just, yeah. Oh, that was so bad. I feel so terrible now, too, man. That was so terrible. I'm so sorry. Is this uh, is this like a Witcher pick last year, Benny, where like it would be worthy of uh, making an episode on it? What are, what are your thoughts there? 
I don't know, man. I, I don't. I don't particularly want to take on any more series, to be honest. I'm yeah, fair enough. Um, but so, in the hypothetical, is you it know, in that watch same it if you want to watch it. Um, <laughs> it's not a perfect show. In fact, there were a bunch of things that you know I, I could. I'm not going to go into any grapes I have because because I just, just ruined, ruined it. it for me. Because the only but, one um, that mattered was already said. Suffice to say, I had plenty, but the overarching story kept me interested. You know, yeah, like, cool. I was really curious about what was going to happen next mm. every time and the it, episode was over. So well, the, it has that going for it. It's got a lot that, of Android milk too, which everybody ooh, knows. Oh, I love ooh, me some Android Good milk. for your teeth and bones. So yeah, uh, I know you're a big fan of that, man. Well, you know, there's lots there's, of vitamin D. There's certain, there's a lot of movies out there. Some that are terrible that I still love to watch because I think the concept is so cool, you mm. know? So even though, so many elements of the film or the TV series are terrible. Like a concept can carry me in, in certain things and give me, get a lot of mileage out of me. So, mm. I mean, whatever I, I, it was such a stupid little thing, man. It's a, that totally blew up in the wrong direction. I'm really sorry, Ben. <laughs> it's fine, dude. It, it's, uh, it's what happens when you fire up the improbability drive. That is the EBD podcast. And that's, you know what? That's cool. That's fine. I, I love it, man. No, in all seriousness, though, like pot of stew scene, Blade Runner ripoff aside, I am curious about the show. I saw the trailer. It definitely looked interesting and weird. Um, I like the sort of religious kind of bent on it. I mean, not that we've never done any sci-fi that had like, you know, sort of religious, spiritual overtones, undertones, but uh, that seemed to be kind of front and center. So that definitely piqued my curiosity as well. You know, it plays and then, a part for sure. The uh, yeah, and then the, the the kind of the ongoing thing that we've seen in numerous different properties that we've dug into is just the idea of uh, machines and humanity and what's human, you know, and can be machines be more human than human, you know, to use a kind of a mm. very lame Blade Runner reference myself. To quote Rob Zombie. Yeah, to, to quote Rob Zombie and uh, Blade Runner, which is pretty lame. Uh, Morpheus, what is going to be at the orgy? Machines! Machines! <laughs> Machines! Hey, Morpheus, how long is the orgy going to last? 100 years! <laughs> Dude, I tried sharing that to our Facebook like a year ago, and Facebook like muted it for copyright, and I was like, for fuck's sake, really? Like an old MTV skit is that valuable? Fuck you guys. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed, but they sort of censor whatever they want, whenever they want now. It's great. Pretty much. All right, Kev. I heard Morpheus is having an orgy at his place after this. (laughs) It is true what many of you have heard. (laughs) (laughs) It's such a good skit, man. Oh, my God. It really is. All right, it's your turn, bro. Okay, so for my number three pick... I am choosing the EBD drop. And this is something that we three, this show, received as a gift from fans of ours. And firstly, I would just like to say 2020 was a great year for the show. And we love the fans that we have. All of you people that listen to the show are just great. And your appreciation really warms my heart and really makes me feel good. We've also gotten a number of you supporting us on Patreon, which also really makes me feel good. And I know that Chad and Ben feel the same way. So this, the Rolling Stallones took it to a new level. We, they were fans of our show, and they reached out to us and wanted to give us a shout-out. We featured them in an episode. We've talked about their albums as they've come out. And now we're fans of theirs. So... We've become fans of theirs, and as a gift for us for this year, they made a, well, they labeled it the EBD drop. That's what we call it. Uh, it will probably be an intro, an outro, and everything in between in the future, and we're going to play it for you in a couple of minutes here, a couple of seconds, rather. It's a track that just uh, is sort of uh, pours D over to our show, and uh, I was super psyched to get it, and I really like it, and I really love that they did that so guys thank you x nick and goji awesome yeah super thoughtful awesome amazing track here it is hey, 
Fuck it, grab your mitt. I was just cracking up the whole time I heard it and um, was very touched and like the amount of effort that these guys put into it is just, yeah, I love it. I love I love that we're connecting with people with similar levels of like obsessive nerdery and willingness to put in effort to make really funny or great stuff. So I just, I love the community that's growing. Yeah. Wow. That was really well said. It's, it definitely resonated with me uh, in the sense that like, the, the the track is like 20 layers of nerd deep, you know, like our show. So uh, I feel like they sort of captured the essence of it perfectly, man. Yeah. And I might have spit take my drink when they took the shit to piss out of me about not having a ranking above a five in my algorithm. That was really funny. <laughs> I thought that was great. That was excellent. Yeah, there was a lot of... There's a lot of nice little nuggies in there. I really like the way the whole thing ended with uh, Jarhiko doing that Seagal thing from the Seagal episode. <laughs> I'm touched. You finish your homework? Fuck it. Grab your mitt. <laughs> yeah, so really uh, just super humbled by that. Really great. And that was something that brought me a lot of joy. It just happened two days ago, but I was super stoked when I got that. Massive shout out to the Stallones. Big shout out to the Stallones. So that's my number three pick. Huge shout out to the Stallones. And if we don't have those guys on the podcast at some point, we're dead. I think we're doing something wrong. Yeah, totally. Agreed. We'll do a Stallone spectacular. We should we should do a Stallone movie together, like a big call or something. Fuck yeah. All right. So so yeah, much love to the Stallones. What's your next uh what's your next pick, Chad? All right. Um Number three. Like I said, I'm very media heavy this year, which I'm kind of bummed a little bit about. But at the same time, like everyone was locked in their houses all year. So media is kind of all we had. Um, I think my next pick is a movie, um, 1917, which uh, technically falls within our rule set because it was released in January of 2020 in Australia. And it's a World War One movie that's a little gimmicky, but in a fantastic way where the whole thing is meant to be one shot uninterrupted throughout the entire film. And I think they did a really great job. It just blew me away. Wow. I still haven't watched that despite your urging. It's good. It isn't actually one shot. It's like eight shots, but it's fucking feature length movie in eight shots or whatever. It's, it's pretty impressive. No, that's a pretty, pretty incredible achievement, man. And I did watch uh, another one that was your, recommendation that you gave me was Greyhound, which I loved. Mm, that was good. 
really good. Tom Hanks, World War Two again. You know, I'm down for World War One, whatever. But uh, yeah, I would I would recommend checking out 1917. I don't know if it's kind of something we would we would get into, but well, the the reason why I haven't watched 1917 is because. I just wanted to like be able to sit down, put my cans on and like really absorb it. Yeah. And uh, I just haven't had time like that lately. It's like I'm falling asleep during something or. Yeah. Or I'm not able to do it in a single sitting. Yeah, exactly, man. So, you know, I- I'll, uh, I'll give it a, I'll give it a watch. I definitely think it's worth a, a single sit down viewing if, uh, for those of us that are pressed for time. No doubt. What, uh, what is it? I mean, I know it's a World War One movie, but does it center around any specific part of the war or? yeah it's a it's a saving private ryan like thing where um two soldiers are given a message to pass on and it follows them from the front through the enemy areas and into another area um so this it's it's been a little while since i've seen it but i want to say it's like it's character driven but there's very little dialogue it's kind of experiential which makes sense in the way that they do it in a single shot so like you're really thrown into the mix as a viewer um it's Mm. almost first person-y like there's the two characters in the movie and you're the third character so to speak because it's uninterrupted but I, i it's more of an experience and so in terms of the war it covers a lot of ground no pun intended where it's like aha going through different parts of it. You know, you've got your moonscape bomb shelled out front with bodies all strewn about, and then you've got, like, city stuff and forested stuff. And so it kind of it kind of explores the whole of the imagined World War I experience, and evidently the director's grandfather was a messenger, and so they used to send these messengers out on foot to go and run messages to other areas, and so it kind of simulates his own family history. Wow, through fiction, but like, yeah, it's it's a really interesting film. Even if you're not a war buff, it's an experience, and it kind of is an interesting story. And it's also based on like you know historical fact. You know what I mean? So it's not entirely fictitious. You know, sure, yeah. In the sense that like you know his grandfather did this job, so it's like it's a real thing. Yeah, yeah. But the story, the specifics of the story are fictitious. But yeah, it's 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 quite good. I hope that answers your question. It does. Is that an Apple TV thing? I don't think it is. I don't. I just think it was a Greyhound was though, right? Sorry, Greyhound was. Yeah, Greyhound was. Yeah, Tom Hanks was trying to put that in theaters right, right when COVID was in full swing, and Apple swooped in and offered him seventy million, and he kind of had to say yes. So he he was really bummed about it having to go to streaming, but uh, you can understand considering how much of a shit show everything was. Yeah, totally. It was meant to be a normal normal release. Whole year has been like that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Tenet, I finally got around to seeing the other day, and same, same. Like, the movie barely made its money back, so it's it's just been a, a horror show of a year for the cinema heads. Yeah. In terms of financing and stuff. Yeah, Bloodshot, too. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's true, though. The poor, no, it is. Poor bastard got Riddickitis again, you know? Ugh. It's the year of Riddickitis. It's terrible. It is. It's terrible, man. And one of our one of our listeners was like, "What the fuck is riddickitis?" I, I don't know, but it, it feels like I do. What have riddickitis? It's, it's that song that he did. You guys hear about that, or did you hear that? Oh, dude, that song was so good. <laughs> I don't know. It feels like I do. Oh, that was so good. Wait, I, I'm so lost. What are you guys talking about? Friend of the show. Friend of the show. Vin Diesel has uh, begun a singing career. What? It's pretty good, man. Yeah, he's gone full Bruno. Oh, what? Full Bruno? Well, maybe not a full album with a 90-minute documentary attached to it, but... (laughs) He's gone partially Bruno. Interesting. I don't know how we got from uh, 1917 to that, but... (laughs) It's the EBT podcast. Well, yeah, but also, I mean, I guess there's somewhat of a six degrees. You did mention Saving Private Ryan, which was like his Ooh, first movie. I like it. And he was like he it. was awesome in that as Caparzo. He was. Caparzo. Maybe maybe there's something there. I don't know. I mean, otherwise, it's just the usual, like, quantum nonsense. Yeah, that's a good pick, Chad. I, I like that, man. I mean, uh, you know, clearly it uh, resonated with you on multiple levels. So, you know, 
that makes it a great pick. It's not a masterpiece, but it's very much worth watching. Yeah, but that doesn't matter. I think that's sort of the point, you know what I mean, of like at least my angle of coming at the top five list. It's like it's it's whatever gives you like warm, you know, makes you feel good, makes you feel warm. Yeah, gives like say, wow. I, This is definitely a year – well, this is definitely a year of comfort food items, right? So that's something Ben and I say a lot, you know, in terms of films. Like Real Genius is very much comfort food. So, you know, it's like things that made me feel good in that comfort food kind of way, you know, like Brimley, bro. Yo. You know what uh, makes you feel warm and makes you feel good? It sticks to your ribs. It's like a warm hug. Anyway. Benny, number three. Number three. Numero tres. Outside of the uh, prolificness of the Stallones, it wasn't a big music year for me, but I did stumble across one thing that uh, I ended up listening to quite a bit, and uh, I still do. I really like it, and it's just the weirdest thing ever. Uh, Vaporwave what? artist George Clanton did a an album with uh, Nick Hexum, the singer from 311, singer and guitar player from 311. Fuck yeah. Ooh. And it's really I, I love it it's great it's just uh it kind of reminds me of somebody took uh what's the what's the uh <laughs> it's kind of like if somebody took uh set adrift on memory bit bliss by pm dawn and like used that as the template for an album it's like just this really dreamy Ooh. yeah cool album and it's just kind of chill like kind of meditative chill kind of vibe like that like set adrift that is a great album i love that album that pm don album yeah yeah it's it, it vibes like that you know it's got that kind of chill chill vibe if you call it that not to kev too hard on this and like blow this pick up either but like i just kind of am picturing you smoking a bunch of salvia and listening to a normal 311 album and like this this album that you're talking about kind of comes from that hallucinogenic state like i, I just can't quite fathom a vapor wave 311 crossover and it sounds fantastic it's it's less three it's not really so th- i mean nick hexham is nick hexham so yeah fair 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 he brings what he brings to it but it's very totally very different uh, you know it's it's uh it's great it, and it's just so out of left field it's so weird it i remember it, like an article about it showed up in my news feed and i was just like i gotta fucking listen to that and i did and I'm, i love it i still love it it's really great Dude, I'm stoked to check it out. What's the name of the album, Ben? It's just called Nick Hexum and uh, George Clanton and Nick, Nick Hexum. George Clanton and Nick Hexum. We'll put a link to it. You can listen to the whole thing on YouTube on Vapor Memory, but you can also go to uh, georgeclanton.com, and it's it's available there. Dot com, dot com. Wait, what is Vapor Memory? It's just a like the all Vaporwave YouTube channel. Nice. Nice. I like that. If, uh, Kev, if you'll allow it, I wouldn't mind uh, chucking an honorable mention in here because it fits. I agree. I want to do one, too. Um, They re-released the Tron Legacy soundtrack, which is like my getting shit done musical listening uh, album of choice with a a bunch of bonus tracks, and I I really liked it. Nice. Ooh, I like that, man. Yeah. When when did they do that? Uh, Like in the last couple of weeks. Oh, wow. Okay. I'll definitely check that out because I have the the original album and I love it. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah, it's really really good. Um, I'll I'll throw in an honor, honorable mention related to this topic because it it passed through my mind and I kind of put it off the list because I didn't think it was big enough. But um, you know, when we talked about Kung Fury, uh, we talked about the soundtrack and some of that was done by Mitch Murder, which is definitely this sort of in the same ilk of like that kind of eighties super synth synthgasm music, vaporwave, whatever you want to call it. And um I really dig that. And Benny turned me on to uh the mothership, Lisa Belladonna, and I've listened to that numerous times since he recommended that to me and it is just so good, man. Mm. So good. Yeah. So that's my honorable mention in the same category. See that's that's one of those I forgot about it kind of things. Uh Lisa Belladonna is awesome. If you check out her music on, uh, I think she has a band camp and it's just amazing synth music. Sick. She's like a just synth watching virtuoso. Her. Yeah. Oh my God. And watching her in that video, man, just the whole thing, the setup she's got and all of that. It's just, it's so great. So we'll definitely link up that track in the show notes. Mm, I'll check it out. I haven't heard of that. 
I really like the Hyperlight Drifter recommendation, so I'm definitely down. What is Hyperlight Drifter? Benny dropped. I you might have dropped it in the top five last year. Or maybe I don't even remember what episode, but Benny mentioned it. And it's soundtrack to a video game, and it's really good. All right, I'll check it out. The video game is also very good. Yeah, I haven't played One it. One of my very favorites of all time. Really? Oh, definitely. Very cool. Nice pick, Ben. I like it. I I, I totally. Uh, it's good to have a music pick in there. Number four, Kev. Oh, man. I don't know. This is tough. I'm I'm kind of down to two that are both really good that I don't know which to pick. Mm. Well, there's only two picks left, so it sounds like you're in good shape. No, because the number one is unmovable. Ah, okay. So my number three pick is something that four. we – My number four pick, which I'm sure is what I meant, is my – is is something that we have tackled this year a, a couple of different times. And as I was – Driving home this morning, it just listening to it, it I just started thinking about how much I've enjoyed listening to it and diving into that world. And I still do year after year over and over. And that would be the Hyperion Canto series. So I finished Rise of Endymion uh today and I immediately started it over because we're gonna do that episode soon. And I was just thinking about how much I love the stories. And we've extolled the virtues of Dan Simmons and his brothers, Gene and Richard, numerous times on the show in the other episodes. But it's really that it's comfort food, you know? So in the sense of like 2020 was a weird year, what brought me joy? I cannot tell you how many times I laid down to go to bed and I really actually started to prefer to listen to an audiobook rather than watch TV when I go to sleep, which is something I've done for years. And... um it just it's like comfort food now and i really really enjoy it it's a excellent sci-fi series as we've talked about and the writing's great and it's like it never gets old you know it it's aged so perfectly and i just love it so i'm putting it on my list boom number 2 I like it i don't really feel like i need to comment on it considering we've done a bunch of episodes on it but you don't i think one of the more interesting things about hearing feedback from a variety of people that have listened to our show is how they're like how often it's like oh, i should probably read that but i still listen to the episodes anyways and i just uh want to make one more yes. plug that if you enjoyed those episodes like pretty pleased with cherries on top check out the audiobooks at, at the very least or the paperbacks or whatever like it is so worth the time seriously you will not regret it at all and if you do we will banish you as a listener yeah i think that i think the audiobooks make it so much more accessible like there's definitely you know, people that like reading but don't have time to read or people that hate reading and just don't really get into it. And the audiobooks are super accessible. So, Yeah. I mean, if you like listening to podcasts, then audiobooks are really, really close to the same thing. Mm. So that's my number two, short and sweet. Your number four? That's my number, well, I, I think we, I we're, – we're, we're going one to five. Kev's going five to one. Okay. Kev's giving this one a letter grade, and we're giving this one a number grade. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what are TV shows again? Is that a number grade? All right. Well, I'm I'm kind of glad that you dropped the Cantos there because uh, my next pick is a book as well, or a series. Um, I have been looking for good sci-fi to read for years now. I have been striking out left and right with newer stuff and have found myself rereading stuff that I've loved previously multiple times. So Benny, I believe, recommended the Jean Le Flambeur trilogy, starting with The Quantum Thief, and I picked it up a few months back. And it didn't come out this year, but I don't give a fuck. I'm breaking the rule because it is so fucking good, and I really enjoyed it, the whole trilogy. But it doesn't it doesn't matter if it came out this year because the Hyperion books didn't come out this year. It's about what got you jazzed in twenty twenty. Sure, sure. And I'm I'm perfectly I'm perfectly willing to to bend those rules. It's uh it's just a fantastic series that broke my brain in all the right ways and I really, really dug it. Awesome. I'm glad you dug it, man. I, I love those books and uh you know, with some success been trying to turn people onto them for a while, so I'm glad you've connected with them. And, uh, and if anybody's interested, it's Hanu Ryanimi. Uh, we'll put it in the show notes so you can see how it's spelled. It's interesting. The show notes. Uh, yep. <laughs> the show notes. That's how they say it in Finnish. Uh, and it is the, uh, yeah, the quantum, the John Lafleur trilogy. The, the, what I liked most about it, maybe like it was just, it hit me at the right time 
was that there was like no spoon feeding, no exposition. Like they do not define anything. And you are so in the deep end of the fucking pool trying to figure out just what the hell is going on. And it was like almost like a, I don't know, like a puzzle to try and figure out. And it's not until like more than halfway through that they start saying what some of the stuff is. And so you're just like immersed in this universe from the get-go. And it's very out there and really, really enjoyable. I love it. Have you reread it, Benny, or have you done a single go through? I have read through the whole thing twice nice. so far. I'm really looking forward to rereading. I feel like it'll be like a, a whole new thing on the second time around. Yeah, it is because you're right. They do throw you into the deep end of the pool, but that's half the fun of it is, you know, wrapping your mind around all the crazy mind bending tech that he's describing. And, you know, that paired with like a, pretty easy to grasp onto you know swashbuckling adventure heist movie kind of plot Mm. line like it's just it's really good stuff i love it so it's yeah kev it's kind of like got a bit of sherlock holmesy slash detectivey stuff too which would strike your fancy Mm -hmm. love that so i highly recommend check it out we ready for the final stretch here so this is your fourth pick benny Ah, it's number four for me. Okay, I'm I'm breaking with the books thing here because uh, well, I just didn't write down a book this year. Well, whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm going with a YouTube series, which is Ooh. something different. Whoa. Um, okay, that is different. I'm, I'm intrigued now, even more so. It's just something I, I look forward to when their videos come out every week. Uh, it's a channel called Cars and Cameras. Okay. And it's two guys, John and Isaac. Uh, I think they're from North Carolina, and they for the most part, build like go-karts and mini bikes. And uh, more recently, they've taken to making these like really crazy full suspension, you know, sort of dune buggy-ish builds. Um, Love that. It's just uh, it's just like really fun and satisfying to watch, you know, like they usually have multiple part series where they're, you know, it, it takes them like months to build something. So like, you know, you get to see them from mm. start to finish. And, uh, you know, they're just funny guys. Their their motto is sort of uh, no tools, no parts, no plan. It'll be fine. <laughs> I like that, man. It sounds like our show, for crying out loud. Yeah, and, you know, like living where I do on the island, uh, I could build stuff like that if I wanted to, but there's not really any place to, like, ride them. Yeah. So it's kind of a fun way for me to uh, live vicariously, watching people do something that I'd probably love to do do i'd love to tinker around with shit like that but i just can't i don't have the time and i don't have the space for it so yeah i've, I've been watching them for a while and they just keep getting better and better and uh i, I got a lot of enjoyment out of watching them this year it was a source of comfort for me i was like oh sweet cars and cameras video you know when we when we relocate you man you can take that ford escort wagon and you can freaking turn it into a rock crawling dune buggy dude then you'll have that'll be sick dude the aluminum falcon is so long gone <laughs> It's so long gone. Doesn't have to be, dude. We can bring her back. I want to uh, get the President of the United States album with Little Blue Dune Buggy stuck in your tape deck if you ever make a Dune Buggy. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, Benny. I'll check it out. I found a... Um, if you like that kind of thing, you know. Aussie dude who's like a former F1 engineer. He used to make F1 cars back in the day, and it's similar. Like He just like tinkers in his shop, and it's like... So awesome. I like that level of like tinkering where it's just like, oh, I think I want to do X. And then they just do it. But they know what they're doing. So they can do it. You know, like that sort of stuff I definitely get down with. Like I used to watch a lot of like street customs and stuff like that because I just loved watching them just create stuff into a car. I love that sort of stuff. Mm. So yeah, nice pick, dude. I like how you went went and dove, dove into like a, a web series that's very cool yeah i'm finding myself in general enjoying do it shows you know like cooking shows and you know all all varieties of things like that like when i'm just like kind of mindlessly unwinding you know decompressing at the end of the day or what have you i just find it's really enjoyable to watch that stuff and uh you know satisfying in a way and cars and cameras is really great for that and they're funny dudes they're really funny dudes it's awesome i'll check it out for sure Let's get them on the show to boot. I'd love that, man. I'd love it if they came on the show. Last call, Kev. All right, Dan. I'll have me some of the biggest. 
Okay, here's my number one pick, and that would be number five for Chad and Ben, but uh, this is the EBD, so this is how we do shit. It's an A grade. My, my final pick, uh, my number one pick, my A-10 Your pick A-10 warthog pick. Is, let me just, uh, I got to take a quick picture here so you guys can share in the joy. Waiting. Ooh, ooh. Wow, that is, uh, that's special. That right there is... That's a sleeve of double stuff Oreos. Now that right there is my new knife. And I named that knife America. Yeah, exactly. I named this knife America. Because it represents everything that America is all about. I carry America with me every day. And I love it. So the story is I was looking for another a new everyday carry i've got a bunch of knives like some of them like the clips missing the hardware is missing for the clip blah 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 so i i like to go into tractor supply it's a good store and they uh they have a robust selection of knives some of them are bargain bin some of them are not i mean how much mileage are you going to get out of a folding knife anyway you know what i mean so sure i'm like going through the the bargain bin section right and i'm looking at this knife and there's a bunch of knives on this particular day and i'm like hmm these are some pretty interesting choices here and then i see this knife and it is inside a commemorative quote sorry quote commemorative tin that it comes with and this is the smith and wesson we salute our heroes knife (laughs) and it's basically just got a plastic handle (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but the eagle flag theme on it was just too much to pass up. It's, I could not resist it's pretty epic. owning this knife and proudly wearing it on my pants or my belt. It's so ridiculous. I'm detecting a mild sense of irony going on here. There, There is. It's a uh, – it's so ridiculous looking. Um, I, I see like – American flag eagle shit that people put on their cars. And, you know, I'm all about people being patriotic. I find some of that stuff to be a little over the top ridiculous. And this knife kind of falls into that category. I mean, if that's your thing, go for it. I saw this knife and I was like, that is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. And I had to have it. And it has brought me a lot of comedy and a lot of joy (laughs) in the month and a half that I've owned it. And all for a mere 15 American dollars. So it was money well spent, in my opinion. It actually is a good knife. I wanted a a straight-edge knife that didn't have a partial serrated blade on it because I got enough of those. And uh, I just – I love this thing. I I don't know what to say. Like (laughs) it says we salute America's heroes on the back. It's very ambiguous. (laughs) I bet you're just looking for any opportunity to cut something and break that thing out. Right. Especially with somebody that, like, hasn't seen it yet. Every minute of my life. I love it. <laughs> I love being able to whip out America. And that's what I named it. I named it America. I just picture you, like, pulling pencils out of people's hands to, like, give them a quick sharpen up just to kind of spark some conversation. Yeah. Any any reason to, to pull it out. And whenever I whip the knife out, I use that voice and that accent because it just – it has to be that way. In fact, that was originally what the character – Leather Smith was going to be, was a guy that carried a knife around named America, and he had the power of America behind him everywhere he went. I couldn't exactly recreate that in City of Heroes, so this is what it turned into. So now you're cosplaying it in real life? <laughs> uh, I wouldn't go that far. I'm not quite a cosplay guy, but uh, I, I do enjoy whipping out America at every single opportunity I can. Makes me feel good about being American. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you who. So, yeah, that's that's my number one pick. This thing has brought me a lot of joy. That's a lot of joy for $15. So really happy about that. In fact, and a side note to the story was as I was picking through the bargain bin knife section at Tractor Supply, I, st- I struck up a conversation with a guy, and he turned out to be a cop in one of the cities uh, in Bridgeport, actually, which is a pretty – rough town and uh at the end of the hook end of the conversation we talked about all this different stuff but i was like you know i gotta tell you man i just found this knife over here and i really think you ought to get one and he saw it and his eyes lit up and he's like i'm totally getting that <laughs> then you guys totally so, high-fived dude totally high-fived and then we went out into the parking lot and we like took our knives out we like kind of clashed them together you know like thundercat style and we were like go team america 
and now you, and now you're gonna roll some coal with one of those big trucks that sprays black smoke out of the top. You're gonna start coal rolling EVs. <laughs> <laughs> only one thing i can say to that and that's a big 10 for you some bitch bow monkey nuts <laughs> nice dude thank you yeah this is very very some bitch pile of monkey nuts dude but uh i love it i love this freaking knife man so anyway that's my it's my number one i want to i want to just uh state for the record that um similar to you having an american flag eagle knife that is an ironic take on the patriotic nature of a lot of Americans and how funny it is that it's ironic. It really reminds me of how I started using the word, I think it was dude or bro a few years back to be ironic. And now it is no longer ironic for me. And it is a word I say constantly. And so I think you're going to end up with like an American flag shirt and like an American flag tattoo because you've started with the irony and it's going to turn into full blown patriotism in a few years. Well, it's a trap too, because we talked about this before. You mentioned this before, and you're right. Like, you start something to be like clever and ironic, and then all of a sudden, without you even realizing it, it becomes part of your identity, and then you are that loser. <laughs> you're going to like search for American flag knives on YouTube, and then YouTube's going to be like, wait, I can send you down a conspiracy hole, and then you'll like end up in some really crazy place. No doubt, dude. And I, I, I would them. also th- I think that, go ahead, Ben. I was going to say, you already got the mustache. Next comes the mullet. Next comes the truck balls. <laughs> oh, dude, definitely, man. Oh, shoot. See, this is what I hate about the top five, Benny. You're right. I just remembered something that I really wanted to talk about uh, for 2020, and I, I just burned out all my, my picks. We could put it in the end. It's not the same. All right. Well, okay. Tell us anyways. I'll tell you at the end. Okay. We'll get through all the picks, and I'll tell you at the end. I, the last thing I want to say about the knife chat is that it, it in this like as soon as you mentioned the double stuffed Oreos, I was like that those cookies and this knife are exactly <laughs> the embodiment of this country, dude. dude. Totally. Is it the kind of thing that you would like? I mean, they go hand in hand. I should be munching a double stuffed Oreo. While I'm stabbing somebody with my patriotic Yeah, knife. I picture that you've just like vigilante justice stabbed someone with your two and a half inch blade. And uh, you're standing They're over like, them. Oh, you fucking dick. Yeah, you're standing over them eating double stuff <laughs> totally. Oreos in sweatpants, like spilling crumbs on them while you call 911. There you go, man. Instead of peeling an apple, you're prizing open double stuff Oreos and scooping out the stuffing and eating it off the knife. And then throwing the wafers away. Yes. Or to take it take it in a slightly different direction, all I'm really doing is going around and cutting like string and tape on boxes that people can't get open. And I'm eating Oreos while I do no, it. No, 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 no. You've, you've started a YouTube channel where you do what all those knife dudes do with like cutting fucking Pepsi bottles full of water. You ever see any of that really hilarious shit they do? No, but you might be onto something, dude. There's some kind of weird knife asthma. Dude, they'll spend like four days sharpening a knife, and then they'll like stick fifteen Pepsi bottles in a vice and be like, "Check this out," <laughs> and slice like through half of the bottles, <laughs> and they'll get like seven billion views. <laughs> That's how you're gonna make your millions, dude. You eat Oreos and slice empty plastic bottles with knives. Chad, I don't know if you're aware of this or not. This is not a me situation anymore. This is a we situation. <laughs> we are like the three musketeers. It's one for all and all for one. Okay. So if I'm gonna Grow my mullet out and dress up like a redneck so I can cut bottles with my American knife. It's going to happen for all of us. Fair enough. Tell you what, because that's how America works. I'm going to eat Oreos while I do it, too, some bitch. Hold my beer. I'm going to try some. Hold my beer. I'm going to try some. I'll buy a $15 American knife, but I'm only ever using it to blithely eat Oreos like an apple. Ooh, like stabbing Oreos? Or you could you could use it to to gingerly pry the top off the Oreo mm. so you can get at the double stuff cream easier. That's what I said. I said the, all right, the way you eat an Oreo with the American knife, just to be clear, because I did say it before and maybe I got lost in the shuffle, is you pry the double stuff cookie open with the knife, you scoop the double stuff out, eat it off the knife, and then throw the wafers away. <laughs> That right there is America. I like it. That is beautiful, dude. Beautiful. 
And now I want to get, uh, I just kind of, I want to get some double stuff Oreos just so I can do that, make a quick video so we can post it. <laughs> well, I kind of like, right? I kind of can't decide whether you throw the cookies away or crush them up in your hand and stick them in somebody's gas tank as you walk by in the Walmart parking lot or something. Well, yeah, you, you know, you throw them at somebody or, you know, you, you do something useful with it if you can, even if it's just throwing it on the ground and crushing it with your foot. You got to get Walmart in the mix. That place is so weird, dude. I don't understand why it's like that. It's another world. You know, I got my law degree in Walmart. Uh, I thought it was Costco because that's yeah, where I got mine. It is. I, yeah. I got my law degree at Costco. That's, that was that was the reference. Did you just die from misquoting the reference? No, I was tying the reference into what we were saying, you dick. Nice. Okay, I was just making sure. Oh, my God, dude. Wow. <laughs> don't make <laughs> me so fucking pissed. take I out like my it. American flag knife. I want you to get an Australian flag knife so we can team up, dude. dude. I am so gonna see if I can fi- if I can make that happen, dude. There, what I mean, like, there's gotta be what would what would you say is the Australian equivalent of the eagle as oh, like dude. a national symbol? The Southern Cross is the on every bogan's uh, bicep. The Southern Cross constellation that is on the Australian really? flag is a major major symbol of uh the australian equivalent of america oh that's sick we gotta get i we gotta get on this <laughs> i love it i would kill if you had that the southern cross fold out knife yeah the southern cross smith and wesson fold out knife. well not smith and wesson necessarily but be like holden brand it's got to be like a crocodile dundee knife yeah there you go Oh, it should be. Yes, exactly. It should be like Speaking a of which, the other day, like, I have succeeded as a father because I have an almost three year old. And then the other day, I asked. You named your son Paul Hogan? N- close. The other day, um, I asked for my lovely lady lumps to grab me a knife for breakfast. I was like, hey, can you grab me a knife? And he just goes, that's not a knife. And I was just like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Nice. Dude, he, it was he, it was barely English because he can barely form sentences, but he literally said it just like he's like that not knife. I was like, I love you, buddy. That's great. That's awesome. Well done, dude. You have succeeded. You should be proud. Mm, very proud. Well, that's a good pick, Kev. I like it. Thank you. Thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. I can't wait to hear what your final picks are. Your number got a your, lot of mileage out of that one. My my final pick is uh, capital M Murica. In a different way. And it's not like number one, like it's the number one on my list. It just happens to be the last item I'm bringing up. But uh, in the in the genre of bringing joy to this year, the Apple series Ted Lasso was fucking fantastic and really funny. And I uh, really... Really? It was a breath of fresh air in a shithole year. Wow. Okay. Interesting. I like that. And it's like the perfect kind of, you know... You've been making your poor partner watch really terrible movies and shows with you all year long or whatever. It's like a date show. Like it's a, it's a show that anyone can watch and it's really enjoyable. Hmm. Okay. I've seen the ads for that. So that uh, definitely it would intrigue me because it was Sudeikis and I like the premise. So yeah. yeah. So it was surprisingly charming and, and surprisingly funny. What's the show called again? Ted Lasso. Uh, the premise of the show is an American is brought over to coach a – UK f- football team, aka soccer team, and he doesn't know he doesn't know anything about football. But he's like all American, like the most American apple pie, and all these Brits fucking hate him. And it is um, it's quite funny, quite charming. Okay, I'm into it. That's, that's a worthy uh, endorsement. Yeah, that reminds me of the uh, the true story of the hipsters that moved to France to teach them all about the virtues of kale. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like that. Turns out the French have been wow. eating lots of kale for hundreds of years. For a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Where did you hear about that? It is funny, man. Uh <laughs> I don't know in passing years ago, but I, I thought it was hilarious. Yeah, it's definitely funny. Well, this hilarious. is definitely a, a sports equivalent of the kale story. It's a uh, fish out of water and quite funny. And if you got yourself a new iPhone this year, you get a free trial with the Apple streaming. So you get it for free. That's very un-Apple. 
which means we'll never get it, <laughs> never see it. All right, enough on uh, Apple. Next, all right, Chad, uh, you're you're uh, Ted Lasso. Okay, uh, sorry. Wow, uh, he grow. Go ahead. Was that it for Ted Lasso? Yeah, it, it, it does look good. I want to check that out. Yeah, it's good. It's definitely different in the sense that it's it's not. It's not something that we would normally talk about on this show, for example. It's not action-y. It's not sci-fi-ish. But it uh, it was charming. Yeah. Nothing says Sudeikis to me like a Taco Town taco. So I'd definitely check that out. Yeah, for me, it would be dancing during What's Up With That. But, you know, hey, doing the running man. Potato. Yep. All right. Final pick for me, Red Dead Redemption 2. Nice. Incredible game. Damn it. Nice. I, uh, are, you sure that, are you sure that wasn't on your list last year, dude? When did that come out? No. Well, it came out a while ago. On it, it came out for PC, I think, last year. Okay. It was not in my picks for last year. I checked. Are we sure? Did I miss it? I don't think I missed it. I'm pretty sure that uh, there's been one or two moments in the show that we've, we've talked, talked about, about it briefly, but it, it was never officially discussed. So, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I know we've talked about it on the show, but I don't think I picked it last no year. Doubt. I picked uh, Jedi Fallen Order last year. Mm, yep. Oh, Okay. Video wow. Hmm. Interesting. That is a great pick. I'm. I loved the first Red Dead. I mean, I played it endlessly, and the Undead Dead Nightmare expansion. Like it is so good, and I think I'm somewhat afraid to get into it because I'm afraid it's going to just suck me in too deep. What uh, What made you pick it, Benny? Uh, pretty much because I, I like I like I like money. I like money. Um, <laughs> Good answer. Uh, it's a very engaging game and a very engaging story. And um, immersive. You know, at the same time, it's just so much fun to go off and explore the world that they built and go hunting or fishing or, you know, any of those mm. things would seem like they would just be asinine to do in a video game or really it's engaging not. and fun. But mainly it's totally. It's the characters, you know, there's a full cast of characters. You're you're rolling with uh, the Vanderlyn gang and, you know, there's like, it's like a cast of like, I don't know, like 15 or 20 people wow. that you're, mm-hmm. you know, you, you interact with in camp and you do, you know, they, they, sometimes they're your companion. They, they travel with you to do something or, you know, sometimes you're doing things for them and, you know, they're all a huge part of the story and the way the story unfolds uh, around the main character. So it's just good. I, I, there are just so many moments that uh, really just they still haunt me. You know, like they're still they're still in my head. Like because I've never encountered something surprising and delightful like that in a video game before. So That's it's awesome. just how about could you fancy us with the, your best example of such? Um, my favorite one, really, and it's it's something simple. And I think I've actually my, I might have talked about it before, but. Um, let me prepare this. Take your time. I didn't know you could fish in this one because I loved the hunting in the other one. Yeah. It's, um, it, was, it was really good. Like I would go up to tall trees and I would put on the hunter's outfit and I would like get all of the animals that would be exotic down in Nuevo Paraiso. And then I'd tr- ride all the way down to Nuevo and I'd trade them all because that's where you get the max dollar and just get oodles and oodles. It was great. A lot of fun. So you're saying you like Yeah. Money. I mean, there's. There's fishing. There are so many places to fish and just like inviting places to just stand and like watch what the fuck is going on around you. you know? Right. Because it's so immersive and the world building is so intense and so detailed. Yeah. I totally understand what you mean. Like you can at this point with games, you could do that. You can just like go sit by like a stream in a game and you're just like, wow, you know, like that type of thing. Is that that's what you're driving at, right? Yeah, I, I kept finding myself wanting to stall the main story, even though you're kind of, mm. you know, I think all games sort of at at one point or another sort of try to pressure you down the avenue of of completing the story. Sure. But and I kept sure. finding myself wanting to prolong it and just going off and doing, you know, there's all kinds of side missions outside the main story arc that you can do, like bounty hunting right. and things like that. But then, like like we were just talking about the simpler things where you can just go and explore. And, mm. You know, mm-hmm. and, and hunt and, and do those things because the, the world that they built is just incredible. I mean, the wilderness is just so, you know, it's breathtaking. It's like playing a it's like playing a painting, you know, it's it's amazing. Totally. 
Totally. You were going to give us an example of something super simple that was kind of super satisfying to do that fascinated and surprised you. Well, it's just something that happened in the game, and it would be, I believe, uh, what you would call the end of the second chapter of the main story or the beginning of the third chapter where you, you're in between two chapters and you have to ride down south, you know, you have to ride from where you are down south and this song by D'Angelo comes on called Unshaken. And it's just like you're kind of locked into just riding and listening to the song. But it's just this really like surprising sort of, you know, like like some music starts playing that's not, there's not really any music but the soundtrack music in this. It's not like GTA mm -hmm. where you can like listen to a radio station while you're riding your horse. <laughs> But, you know, this song <laughs> starts in and you're just writing and it's just like this moment, you know, it's this really interesting moment. It really like, I don't know, it caught me off guard. It doesn't sound like much, I guess, but. No, it's it's interesting when something can suck you into a world like that. That's really cool. Yeah, no doubt about that. If I still had a console, I'd definitely play something like this. I've I've kind of like, I've never really delved deeply into the western genre and so like this game for me like it looks cool um i i probably would have if i had a console i probably wouldn't have done much with it until probably you mentioning it now and i probably would check it out as a result of this but um how does playing a western how, how is that kind of larger component of it because it's essentially a GTA style game, but it's obviously very different in a lot of ways, right? Um, well, I mean, I guess it's like you would imagine it to be. That's not really the selling point for me, isn't the fact that it's a Western at all. Yeah. It's just you know, I would I wouldn't for I mean, when this came out, I was like, ah, whatever. You know, like I it, 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 I wasn't like foaming at the mouth to play it. Um it wasn't until after I'd, you know, researched some uh that I decided to check it out and it's really just the story and the character development. All of that is very engaging. You know, games now are, you know, it's not a side scroller where you're just running around smashing shit and blowing shit up anymore. Mm. It's it's like you're more like you're in a movie, you know, and you really become attached to the character that you're you're playing and the characters that are surrounding you. And, you know, that's that's the thing about it that I find really interesting more so than the day to day, you know. Makes sense. Otherwise, you know, it's a Western. You're riding a horse. You got a six shooter. You got a lever action gun. You know, like you're you're it's like you would imagine being in a Western. It's 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 that the games are so rich now that you you're like having the experience, man, of whatever the setting is. You know, mm. I mean, yeah, I'm a Western fan, but just like Ben, like that's not what drew me to the game. Like, uh, it's it's so immersive. It's so good. I can't, I can't stress that enough. And just just looking at the map while you guys were were talking, like it's because I know the first game really well, Ben. It's actually m most of the map from the first game, plus easily four times more. Wow! So like tumbleweed, like I don't know where you've gone, but like Rattlesnake Fork and tumbleweed and all those spots that are way, way, way down, sort of southwest. Like those are mm -hmm. those are all in the old other game. Yeah, that's what I had thought. Although I didn't know for sure. Um, yeah, well, you thought right. I, th I, th well, I don't want to interrupt. Is there anything else? you were about to say? Something no, there, I'm, I'm. Go ahead. Jump in. Um, I don't want to pass up the opportunity to ask. I think we touched on this in one of the other episodes, but how much mustache customization is there in this? Ooh. Well, it's funny you should ask. Um, in the single player campaign. Arthur Morgan's hair and facial hair grow over time. Oh. What? So you can grow like, like, like totally know, like CJ style beard. Ben. You can cut a big old walrus mustache out. You can have nice. a short mustache. You can like cut your own hair and, and shave in the camp. And okay. then you can also go to a barber and get like a, you know, a real haircut or facial hair styling. Proceed, sir, style. You can you can go with whatever you like, you know. The I think nice. I think Canon Chat, Arthur nice Morgan one. is just clean shaven, but you can you know you can do you can do them up however you like. Gotcha. And so I imagine there were some mustaches in your uh, repertoire. Oh yeah, I had a full on like Brimley mustache. Fuck yeah. Oh that, man, uh, I tried nice. To, I tried to keep, although the the beard would grow in if I was you know out in the wilderness for Not a really careful. long time. <laughs> That's mm. awesome. 
No, that's a really cool element, dude. That's very CJ from uh, San Andreas, Ben. I like that. Like the like in terms of like, you know, you got to keep working out if you want to stay fit. You know, like that whole thing. I I dug that element. It was sort of annoying, but it was cool at the same time. Yeah, totally. I think they kind of polished those elements up for this. It wasn't quite as in your face. Right. But uh, Sounds if, you, like if you didn't sleep for a long time or you didn't eat for a long time, it would have an effect on your, you know, health, basically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, I, I mean, I'm looking at this map, man. I mean, if you if you go on the current map, if you go to Blackwater and then you, you look at, like, Manzanita Post and Tall Trees, like, that's the top of the map from the first game. So from there all the way down to, like, Tumbleweed, that's the first game map. Yeah. And then you had on the other side of the river, you had Nuevo Paraiso, which was Mexico, basically, right? So you've got easily, like, times three the amount of area to roam. That's insane. Plus a whole lake. That's crazy. I love it. Wow. Awesome pick, dude. Let me see. There's also uh, uh, there's a portion of the game that you spend on the on an island called Guarma or mm. yeah Guarma. So there's there's that does, as well. Does Guar live there? Yeah, <laughs> it's a death. <laughs> well, if you if you knew anything about yeah. Guar, you'd know that they're from Antarctica. Oh, double death. <laughs> <laughs> double death. <clears throat> Ben just stomped on you with his giant platform guar shoes. I did. I slapped you across the face with my odorous urungus penis. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, that's that's what I call it. That's a guar two for Hawat. You had some honorables. I got I got one honorable. I that I I two honorables actually three. <laughs> it's gonna be a long list. I can tell. My first honorable is my stash. I grew a stash. I actually, let me back up. I grew a beard because, you know, you couldn't get your hair cut for a while. So I shaved all my hair off. Then I grew it back out. Then I grew a beard. And I was like, this beard is stupid. So I was like, I'm going to kick it 70s style for a while. I grew some big old pork chops in a handlebar stash. And uh, I know you love mustaches, Jar. Here you go. I think you have a mustache right now. You got a little more of a goatee, I think. But, uh, I love it. Love my stash. Brought me a lot of joy. Got a mustache comb for it. Yeah. I mean, mustaches are great. My dad had a mustache my entire life. So, you know. Are you serious? Yeah. Wow. Uh, the the entire time I knew him, he did. He didn't his entire life. He wasn't like born with one, but, uh, you know. The only man born with a stash. Two bits of gander. Um, my other two are Mando, even though we just talked about it a week or two ago. Yeah, I was tempting to put that one in there, but. As you said, we did just talk about it. I think everybody knows how we feel about it. We did just talk about it. I'm only going to say, yeah, they know how we feel, but I'm just going to say that it it gave me warm feelings because it definitely started restoring my faith in Star Wars. That's it. That's all I'm going to say. Absolutely. Did, I believe I even said in the episode it did the same for me. Yeah, exactly, man. You know, and that's a great thing. And it was just uh, like I remember rewatching the first season and just was like, man, this is so great. It was great. You know, and season two was even better. So – yeah, nice. There's that. And then my final honorable mention is definitely Comfort Food. It's the only game I've been playing since it came back, and that's City of Heroes. We've referenced it numerous times on the podcast. Uh, unlike Ben, that was I get hooked on that game. Go, what? Go ahead. That was one of my picks last year. Yeah, I think we both had the same pick. But it was kind of a, a dual pick for both of us. It was, and I didn't want to like make it a pick again. But the the plain fact of it is, is that that's the only game I've been playing, and I think part of it is because I can play it online. And the funny thing is, is I don't like online games. I don't like any of that really, except in City of Heroes. And between that and the customer, uh, the character creator, and all that stuff, I can just log in and like be super creative and create cool stuff and. You know, log in and solo, log in and team, and I I like that, man. It's like that's what keeps me from getting games like Red Dead and stuff like that. And it's just comfort food too, man. This is a game that I played for a long time with Jar Higo, and uh, it's great to have it back, you know. So it's cheap entertainment, and I love it. So that's my third honorable mention. That's it. Done. Yeah, it's great. That's a great game, great community. I love the creativity of it. I just can't sit in front of a mouse. Uh, I can't do mouse and keyboard anymore. That's it, man. Uh, any of you guys honorable mentions? Nah, I dropped my Daft Punk uh, album in, and uh, I think that was it. Oh, I got a I got a reproduction of the Evil Can Evil stunt cycle toy. Nice, and that thing is so much fun. What? 
You did? Yeah. Damn, dude, that is noteworthy right there. It's definitely not the same as the original toy as far as how it looks, but it, it operates the same way. The the launcher thing, I think, is pretty much the same. Um, it is a blast. <laughs> it's so great. Not that I, you know, not that I break it out every day or anything, but uh, I've had a couple of good sessions with it since I bought it. And just, just having it sitting there is, is just funny and fun. That was like that was like my number one ask when I was a kid for Christmas. I just that's what all I wanted was the evil can evil stunt cycle. But I didn't realize that like they stopped at that point they'd already stopped making them because evil had like gone after the reporter with a fucking baseball bat. So my <laughs> deal stopped making the toy. Yeah, um, right. So I had no idea that it like I just didn't understand why I couldn't get one. But uh so it's it's like the one that got away. Did uh are you did you check out the fourth Toy Story movie, Benny? Being a uh non-parent of toddler maybe you haven't seen that one but i have not but i'm aware that uh keanu has a character called dude kaboom, dude sort kaboom of like a, yeah sort of like a horse d over to the uh yeah evil knievel stunt cycle canadian evil knievel totally oh and bill and ted oh yeah totally bill, bill and ted gets my my other honorable mention Ooh, nice i like that i forget what it's called but uh you know everybody knows bill and ted yeah i want to check that one out i do too Cool. All right, let's uh, let's wrap this up. We talked about the Bill and Ted one a couple weeks back. Why don't we do that next week? What do you guys think? I'm into it. Yeah. I like it. I, I yeah. Let's check it out. See what the fuss is all about. Uh, well, there you have it, folks. Stay tuned next week for Bill and Ted's The Return or whatever it's called. <laughs> Bill and Ted Return. Uh, let's do the deaths real quick. Yeah. Oh yeah. Nuggets test ratings. There's no nuggets. The whole show was nuggets. No nuggets. No ratings. Obviously, it was top well, five, but pretty much you're probably going to come out with something. Uh, I'm going to go with a ten. <laughs> <laughs> All right, deaths. Ben, dick jokes. Uh, he couldn't get enough. Couldn't get enough dick jokes. Yep. Philip uh, K. I didn't have the death dick tally jokes. I didn't have the death tally. What's that? Philip K. Dick jokes. Yep. Yep. To be of specific. Course. Right. Um, I didn't have the death tally ready to go. That was pretty egregious. Yeah. I ejected, ejected to look something else, Rufus Sewell. look something up for you. Yeah, Rufus Sewell. That was great. Thanks for taking that death. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, then Ben messed up Dick's name, Philip K. Dick's name. And then you had, this is interesting. You had a death. You mentioned the Grateful Dead and some lyrics from the Grateful Dead. That became a death. Then Ben said, every time I hear the Grateful Dead, I die and I'm not grateful. <laughs> Which was great. Full. <laughs> Loved it. And then I use I use the wrong nomenclature to uh, use similar syntax as Chad from last week, and I said homage instead of Horse D over. And then uh, I tried to blame it on the Void Witch Binds, and said that I was saying fromage, fromage. not homage, <laughs> which I kind of liked. To be fair, <laughs> I kind of liked that I was getting creatively clever with it, but yeah. at the same time, it's a death is a death. And then I ejected on the Red Dead Two map, and then. Uh, I had a, a guar twofer. I had the the reference didn't land, and then Ben slapped me in the face with his giant. Uh, what is it called again, Ben? Odorous um, urungus. Odorous urungus. That's it. <laughs> your your energy levels are dying too. <laughs> <laughs> you had a long morning, man. Okay, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, thank you for a great 2020 year. We loved having you and. Thanks for joining us for the top five list. Stay tuned next week for the new Bill and Ted movie. That should be fun. Bill and Ted and face the music. Until then, nice. What's that? Bill and Ted face the music. Thank you, Jarhigo. Sorry, I didn't know the name of it. That should be a death too, for crying out loud. Well, I didn't either. I just looked. I, I ejected to figure it out. Oh, two deaths. I like it. So we got Bill and Ted's Bill and Ted face the music. Stay tuned for that. And thanks again. We'll see you on another time. See ya. See ya. And that's going to wrap up this week's episode, folks. If you'd like to support the show, there are now numerous fantastic ways to do so. You can rate us or review us on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast nuggleberries. Also, tell your friends. Everybody's got at least one friend. Tell that one friend. Watch the show. Sorry, listen to the show. See? The other thing you can do is you can support us on Patreon. We now have a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash EBD podcast. So check us out and throw us a buck or two if you like. Also, social media, you can find us using the handle at EBD Podcast. You can find the show notes for this episode in your podcast app O choice or at our website, ebd.fm forward slash episodes forward slash 88. 
Please join us next week, folks, as we talk about Bill and Ted Face the Music. That should be fun and exciting. Thanks for joining us for our top five list. Thank you all for listening in 2020, and we will see you next time. Thanks again, folks. Thanks.